Welcome everyone to uh, today's sixth session of our Journalism at UL Media Matters Autumn Seminar Series. Um, really happy to welcome uh, Ms. Reem El Hassani here. Um, Reem has graduated uh, two years now, isn't it? Is it two years or yeah, coming up on two years? Well. Uh, coming up on two, coming up on two, yeah. 2021, I think we finished, right? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just uh, time, time, time has uh, has gotten very confusing <laughs> in recent years. But um, Reem did her MA uh, during the, the the COVID period, uh, which was a a, 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 a tricky time um, to, to 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 be taking a course. Uh, but she was always a very uh, a very positive presence in the MA group, um, and was quite an unusual specimen in that she came from working as a pharmacist into journalism. So it was a very kind of an un unusual uh, pathway into doing our MA. And um, I'll always remember her doing the TV module in, in the MA. And just from the very first exercise, it was just very clear that 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 Reem had a very natural talent for TV. Um, uh, so she had that talent, but also very kind of calm and good humoured under pressure, uh, which I think they're critical characteristics uh, for, for, for people doing TV. So it's been really satisfying for all of us here at Journalism U at UL to, to watch her career progression um, since graduating. She uh, essentially um, uh, immediately got one of, uh, uh, one of the News Today uh, presenter positions in RT, which are highly competitive to get. And uh, she's uh, she's under, uh, in her second year of that um, of that news today gig at the moment. So um, doing terrific work, improving all the time uh, and again, managing to communicate really complex information into language a 10 year old can understand, which is actually the toughest skill of all, I think. <laughs> so so today, uh, Reem is going to give us some perspective on how she prepared, I suppose, for uh, you know, helped try to make herself work ready while while in college, you know, um, uh, and, and what she's learned in the time since. Uh, she'll also be giving some insights into what works for TV packages, which is particularly relevant for our second year group, many of whom are joining us today, Reem, um, and they're currently preparing to pitch for their final package in the TV journalism module. So you, you, you may remember uh, yeah, that do. a couple of years I ago. Do. Um, so, yeah. uh, so there'll be plenty of time for questions at the end. Uh, so, uh, like I said, Reem has a very clear memory of what it's like to be sitting uh, where you are now. Um, so, um, so you 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 should have plenty of questions in that regard. Um, so, um, so, 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 welcome, Reem. Thank you so much for thanks for that lovely introduction. I don't feel like I need to say anything about myself. You said it all, <laughs> but um, yeah, no. So, I'm just gonna get started in. Presentation. I've been working here at RTE for just over a year now, and I did get this job right after graduating. So it was definitely a steep learning curve at the time, I suppose, with everything being online. But the skills that you do learn on the course really do come in so handy, like in everyday kind of like using stuff that you learn on the course. So it's great like that. So um, my little presentation is about making yourself work ready. And on the second slide, I think it's very important to note that it starts with your CV. So I feel like that's one of the most important things because that's what I was told when I first started that my CV really used to that kind of thing. So it was definitely much more eye-catching than like the typical kind of like, you know, white piece of paper with loads of text on it. It was kind of like tailored to the new today job. So it was colorful, there was a picture, there was text, and it was very just short and concise and just had the important information. So I know that I got a lot of feedback on that. So I just thought it was an important thing to pass on because I was only trialing it when I was applying for this job. So they said that like the quirkier kind of the CV is, the more it stands out and the more eye-catching it is. Obviously, depending on the job, I was quite lucky this was a kids news presenter job. So it did stand out in that sense, so that's quite good. And also, like Virgil said, I'm a pharmacist, so most of my work experience, most of my qualifications, all that kind of stuff was related to pharmacy. So it was really important that I kind of put down anything that was related to journalism on the CV first as well. So like my master's degree and then the work experience that you kind of did was relevant. I didn't really have too much kind of work experience because the master's was my first. So I know like we did the Limerick Voice and things like that. So I had all of those things in. And obviously I'm sure everyone knows those with up-to-date contact details and professional emails. I feel like I've mentioned all the contact material you have asked. And I know that a lot of jobs don't often ask for cover letters and sometimes it's just kind of like part of the application process or something like that. But I do think that from what I've heard as well here, that it does give you a little bit of an edge and just have to stand out more. So that's my kind of tips and tricks. I know that like Canva, which is where I made this presentation as well, there's loads of like um, templates and stuff for CVs that are quite 
nice and colorful and eye-catching. So there's loads of them there. So utilize the tools that you have. And then moving on to the next slide, which is the interview skills. So this was my first time doing a journalism interview and it was very nerve wracking because it was very different from the kind of interviews that I'd done before. So I was probably researching the role for about two weeks, the company, everything about it, kind of saying like what they expect, what kind of packages they put out, what kind of like news elements have tailored for kids and stuff. And just to make sure that I kind of knew exactly what I was applying to so that when it did come down to the interview, like after I'd done all that research, I was kind of like preparing different kinds of things that I'd heard that they kind of asked about, like coming up with like different stories, things that are covered in the news at the time, like how have they, like those were the kind of interview questions they'd ask, how would you handle this? Or like, what did you see that's kind of like um, worth covering in the news? How would you cover it? We've already covered this, but what would you make different? What would you do? So there was a lot of things that I probably wouldn't have been prepared for previously. So like you would with any job, but just this for me, this is the first time kind of doing this because it was a journalism job, whereas pharmacy jobs are a bit different. So research it like you would with any job. And um, oh, the audio, can everyone hear? Okay, am I speaking too fast? Oh, okay, uh, sorry. No, it's good. It's good. Sorry, I, I, okay, I was good. just double checking. You're you're, you're good, Reem. Um, sure. And the, the slides are going through okay as well. Okay. Can you see the slides as as, as I'm toggling Perfect. through them? You can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, great. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. So yeah. You know, so research definitely the role that you're applying for because be it like a new today presenter or a multimedia journalist they're very different. Like at the time I was applying for like jobs here and then jobs with like different newspapers and things like that. So the job specifications were different. So I felt like with every interview stage it was important to tailor my preparation towards that. I know this is probably really obvious, but just to kind of like remind you that this is kind of like what I think is very important that helps a lot. Also, a lot of questions that I found with all of the interview applications were um, having story ideas ready, like three or four story ideas. What's current? How would you cover it? Why would you cover it? Why do you think it's important to mention this? All these kind of things. And I suppose with TV, then I'll go into this later on in my slides, it translates to how would you cover it would be like what kind of shots, what kind of angles, who would you speak to, how would you go about getting them, things like that. So I speak about that later, but like all those kind of things, like all of the elements of how you would make a package or make a written piece or anything like that, you'd have to have prepped those beforehand, I'd say, just so you go in knowing that like this is what I can do and this is how I would plan to do it. And it's also like if you're kind of coming up with story ideas. And you're know, struggling to find them. I know that when I was a student, I really I was like, well, what's new? I don't know what to find and things like that. But um, even like looking at what's making the headlines and just like how you would cover it a different way, who else you speak to to get a different perspective and things like that. And with any interview, always important to just ask a few questions at the end. And then on the day of the interview, I think it's very important that just like general interview kind of skills to be punctual, to be confident, to be gladly and clearly. And they are going to ask you some questions and stuff like that, and like just about skills and things like that, like editing skills, what can you use, what can't you use, and things like that. And I always think it's very important to be honest with the software that you're familiar with, with the ones that you can use, how well you write them, and all those kind of things, just so when you do get the job, there is, do you know what I mean? They know what you can do and what you can't. So I think that those skills are very important. And also, um, when you do set the job, it's always important to know that you can ask for help like with an editing software that you're not familiar with, or with like I know that when I started this job, they were using Avid and I'd never used that before. So it was very like there was like a one-day training, but whenever you had anything else, there was always someone there to kind of help. And um, yeah, so I do think that those kind of tips would help for an interview. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask me at the end. And then the next slide is the preparing stories and coming up with ideas. Um, like I said, when I was doing my master's, it was really hard for me to think about what our story ideas, what can I come up with, how would I cover it. Now it's kind of funny, anytime I hear anyone say anything, I'm kind of like, hmm, that would work, or this would be an interesting story to cover. So it really is, I believe, the core to role as a journalist, and um, they're literally everywhere. Like I kind of touched on in the previous slide, like coming up with stories, for me specifically, my job works a lot with younger kids. And I'm, I suppose I'm lucky in the sense that I've younger siblings and cousins and that who would tell me what's going on and what's happening and things like that. And also working with news today, we do have people kind of getting in touch, telling us this is happening in schools, this is what's this. And then we also are keeping an eye on the main news, seeing what else is being covered, how it would affect children. And 
is it too much to mention to children or how would we simplify it enough so that the children know what's happening but they don't need to know the exact details and things like that like this is happening a lot with um what happened going to cover that for children and like we had to mention it in some way but we didn't want to mention the all the details because we thought that that would be too much for the audience to speak to themselves. So you really have to think about how to tailor it. And then other things like um, inflation and cost of living is in the news a lot and was in the news a lot very recently and still is an ongoing issue. So it was one of those things that we know is being talked about a lot. Children are hearing those words a lot, but they're not probably not understanding it. So it's one of those things where you really do have to like think about how do I simplify this in terms of something that a child would understand to just comparing it to things that they would use in their everyday life. I think we compared inflation to like the cost of a pasta bowl and like the ingredients in it just for stuff that would be relevant to them. So it's a lot of thinking of the audience when you're kind of coming up with the ideas and then finding the ideas, where to find them is kind of like talking to people, like any kind of thing that you kind of like, anything you hear that's a bit of thing a bit different. And especially because everyone has so many different interests, like music, sports, to all sorts of different activities, you'll hear different things in those circles and they'll always spark an interest. It might not always be a hard news story, but it would be an interesting news angle or something different, especially for, I feel like my job is like hard news, but also like what the classes are up to, what they're doing, fun activities for Halloween, for Christmas, all those kind of things. And I think one of the most important things that I feel like um, is sometimes overlooked, making calls. I feel like that's the quickest way to kind of get the information that you want or get access to who it is that you want to interview you much quicker than getting an email and not getting a response or anything like that anytime i need to find someone to interview or i need to find some source or some story or anything like that i'm always like let me make a call see what's around see what's happening call the primary school what are you guys doing for christmas oh we're doing this oh we've never covered that before let's go like i think um one of the days the kids were going to have pumpkin patch with donkeys or something, not hard news, but it's just something different that hadn't been kind of covered on our show just because it is kids news, so it's kind of like that. And then when it comes to like um, hard news stories, like one of the examples that I'm going to show is the celebration of the 100 years since women got the right to vote in Ireland without any qualifications and even that getting kids involved. So sometimes you'll hear about something and you'll be like, this is great, but how do I get it to work for my audience? So my job is a lot of like, this is a really good news story, but it would might not translate for kids. So how do I get the kids involved to make this something that they would like? And kids are my audience, but in other audience, you're always kind of thinking of like, how would this story work for where it's going to land as opposed to just how can I put it together? So I think that's one of the most important things. And then one of the, like, once you've kind of got your story, you've got like, I'm going to do this story, I'm going to talk to this person, I'm going to do this. One of the most important things is planning the filming and the interviewing beforehand. And I find I've developed this along the way and it does make going out filming because we 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 produce a package every single day. So every single day you kind of need to be thinking, this is what I'm going to film, this is what I'm going to do. So at the beginning, it's kind of hard to get around it. But now when I know I'm doing this story, like um, one of the stories I'm going to do in the picture, I'm going to a pumpkin patch and there's obviously taking around the, the pumpkins and things like this. And then before I go, I was thinking, why am I covering this story? What's the news angle here? Because my audience is kids, it doesn't have to be very like, oh, something. This is like, oh, this is a pumpkin patch and there is donkey taking around. So you're, it's just good fun for kids. But like, how am I going to translate this to the younger audience? So I need to be thinking of like, what do I need the kids to tell me that I can use in my package to tell the story for other kids to understand? So that's why you kind of have to really think about your questions, but not only your questions, you have to think about how you're going to script it as well, so that the answers from the questions you get kind of slot in to the different, so it all works as a package and tells the whole story, as opposed to just random bits of information that you kind of have to then piece together, like, oh, I have this and I have this, but they don't really go, so it's always good to be plan, plan ahead. And then also, once you have the script and the questions and things like that, I find when you're out there filming, I go as a cameraman now, but like when you're out there filming or you're kind of like, I can use this shot for this line, this for this, this for this. So you're constantly thinking of all the different elements and how they'll pair together as opposed to just anything kind of thing. So it's always good to be prepared and also to kind of discuss this with the person that you're going to be going out to see. I'm going to interview you on this. I'm going to chat to you on this. I find that because 
it is kids, I do find myself having to tell the teachers, this is the topic we're going to be covering. It would be really good if the kids knew a little bit about it, were able to chat about it, think about that. So that when I ask them questions, they don't kind of shy away from asking them. They know when they want to show off what they know. So um, then the next slide is finding ideas. So I've kind of touched on this already. Like, I do think that stories are literally everywhere. Like, I think I'd be chatting with my friends about some random thing, and I'd be like, this would make a great thing like this, and this would make a great thing like this. You really kind of do get on high alert for, like, just hearing what these things are. So they literally are everywhere. So just keep an ear open and listen to what people are saying around you, and you'll hear all sorts of different bits. Just think about, like, you know, oh, like what's happening at home, what's happening in the local football club, what's happening in the local music scene, what's happening in the local primary school, what are kids getting up to? I know that during my year on my masters, it was during COVID, so a lot of this was how are people kind of adapting, what are kids kind of doing to cope with COVID, stay in touch with each other, and I kind of think I did a few stories on that because that was what was kind of relevant at the time, but now that COVID's gone on there, it's not gone, but like a little less present, it's Oh, there's so much more and so many different angles to cover things as well. And like I said previously, like what's in the news already, just think about a different perspective. Like, okay, they've covered it from this side, but what about these people? What about this? How is this person affected? What would they say? Would this be good for them? Or is it just good for this group of people? Like always think about, there's more than just one side to any story. So I always kind of keep that on the back of my mind. And like I said, things that you find interesting and like things that are happening in that field. So like with those kind of examples and stuff. And then the next one is planning the deep, the next slide for real, that's okay. I've kind of touched on this already, but it's just kind of like, you have a story idea and you're kind of like, what is the story that I want to tell and why do I want to tell it and how will I tell it? Like, what's the best way to, why is the story important? Why do people listen to this? Why is it something that I think is newsworthy, be it hard news or like a wider news story? So a lot of it is, I think, coming up with, once you kind of have a concept of the story, coming up with the interview questions, and they will essentially become the boxes that you're going to use, the box that you're going to use in your package. So I think that's very important, coming up with the interview questions to get the information that you need to share that story. And then also coming up with your script at the same time as the interview questions, just so, like I said earlier, what you have works together. So it's not a case of just random questions and a random script and then trying to work them together. It literally is all building blocks of the same thing. So they're all gonna just come together to make your package. So one of the packages that I'm gonna show is about women getting the right to vote. And uh, like I said, because kids that are listening, like my audience is what I have in mind, I'm kind of thinking of the questions that I'm gonna ask the kids. And I know that they've been prepped on this beforehand and prepped on the topic beforehand because I've had to chat the teacher and then I've asked her to go through these kind of things so that the kids know and are knowledgeable on this because they then came to a workshop to make posters for women's rights to vote kind of like um as like an activity to make it a package and then this links to the pictures because it's kind of like you kind of need something happening something happening related to the topic that you're discussing so that's what we kind of decided on for that specific one and um we can show that example if we want it's the first example for us that one Okay. I'm not sure. Uh, October 1922. Is the sound coming through there? Just. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's lovely. To mark the centenary of the Irish Free State Constitution coming into effect on the 25th of October 1922, the National Print Museum have run a workshop for pupils all about women's voting rights and how they came about. We're learning about the women's rights to vote in 1922 and how they didn't properly get it till then. 100 years to vote, it was all more difficult and hard. And it was so different. You couldn't vote if you were... Uh, of a different race or couldn't write. In 1918, women got the right to vote, but with qualifications so that they had to be white. They 
had to be over the age of 30, they had to have a college degree and they had to be able to read and write. 100 years ago, there was the centenary of women getting the vote, all women over the age of 21. It was called universal franchise, which meant that, that everybody who had reached that age could vote for uh, the first time. We had a new constitution and we, um, we were in a period and we were called the Irish Free State. To create their posters, the pupils used a 100-year-old printing technique. It's called letterpress and movable type is used to create the slogans and a flatbed proofing press is used to print multiple copies. They were like about that big and they had slogans on them for women's rights campaigns. And our slogan was in my group of five, uh, it was give us rights where we will fight equal where it matters. I really enjoyed um, choosing the slogan and picking out what we were going to do. All genders, equal rights. That's right. Uh, you can use lots of different materials and different styles. I worked in a group and we did um, all genders, equal rights. Printing press was invented in the 1400s, along with movable type, which was a huge leap forward. This helped ideas spread across Europe and from there on all over the world. Now, so that was kind of just like one example to just kind of show that, like, I keep saying, like, the script and the boxes and the things to go together and the questions and the piece to camera and all these kind of things. But I kind of hope that you kind of saw that was a quite rushed in the sense that it was just like we were back at one and that had to be on air at four so it was very quick but it was a case of just like making sure that the information in the script is back checked but also beforehand the press was helpful in the sense that I was asking the children the question to slot into the script to tell the story of it's been 100 years since women got the right to vote this is what had happened previously this is what's happened now and this is what we're celebrating and then in terms of the picture it's kind of one of those things where we were looking for something for children to do in order to kind of showcase that as opposed to just being in a classroom learning about it raising their hands writing their book we we're kind of looking for something a little bit different so it just so happened that there was an opportunity for the printing workshop and using old print and stuff like that and it went very well to showcase what women kind of had to do back then and how much harder it probably was as opposed to like now kind of going on your laptop throwing something together printing it out and kind of ready to go so just to kind of use that visual element to showcase that this is what was kind of happening at the time as well as what they're talking about it so they kind of pair together and make it look more interesting as opposed to just kids in the classroom like I said learning about it which a lot of our stuff is and work for something but just for this one we try to do it a bit differently and then the PC camera is always something that saying a bit of information that's kind of key to the story kind of like something that will tie into press together or anything like that and just having the kind of piece to camera kind of like owning your own piece and kind of being there in the piece because we get a lot of pieces from online and stuff like that and we'd edit them together and put them together and stuff but it's just if your kind of piece to camera isn't there it kind of just can come across as one of those as well sometimes that you're not there so it's just kind of making your piece and also adding to it adding just like this is what happened and this was me talking to these kids and finding out the information so just a little bit more of a personable approach I suppose as opposed to just giving the information and then touching on it that other things that kind of lit packages would be NAS and added sounds and those kind of things are always very important to think about. Uh, NAS is really interesting in the sense that it really does lift a package and sometimes you can kind of hear it if the NAS aren't there like let's say you're adding another track or you're moving around separating the audio and the video tracks and then you're messing with them you can see and hear that it's just not clicking quite rightly if they're not in the right place as such so it's a very important sound and I know for a lot of practices there's a lot of um online creators for like IT online and stuff that use that a lot to really lift their packages and you can see them kind of like you know even like cutting wrapping paper and the scissors kind of going across and like sell tape and like adding that on and it really does lift the package to show that this is happening I know other people have done it in lots of like little sounds like even like can opening, walking on snow, like anything. So they really do, really just bring that package to life. And with TV, it's great because you have the pictures to showcase it. So it's okay. But like with radio packages and things like that, that's are very important to kind of just show more of the atmosphere and stuff as well. So that's that. And also, like I work with kids, so the math sometimes are just kind of kids chatting in the background, which is great. And it really does lift the package and stuff. 
but then we can also like add sounds and things like that. So with harder news stories, you probably would have seen this as much, but the next example I'm going to show is like a Halloween piece. So just to make it a bit more lively, just to give it a little bit more of a fun element, a little bit more of like attention grabbing kind of thing. There's lots of like different little sound effects to add into this because the kids in this particular piece were a little bit quieter so I felt like there was just that little need for something a little bit more to make it a bit more energetic and just a bit more upbeat and a little bit different so if we can click on to the second example sound Treats and subs, what a spectacular way to sum up all the Maths Week celebrations. Maths Week is a week where everyone comes together and celebrates maths. We did a uh, uh, PE with maths, so then it makes maths funner in the different ways. We did Maths Week with senior infants. My buddy name is Natalia and she's from Romania. Our Minecraft art, it's like where we have like boxes drawn for us and then we have to draw ourselves but in Minecraft. My favorite thing about maths is that um, it's useful, like everywhere you go, you probably need maths. We did maths tricks and everyone, everyone got a sheet of paper with a trick or did a card trick. Do you want to do a maths trick? Yes, I do. What's this? These are cards. Uh, okay. In a few seconds, I'm going to turn my back and you're going to throw them all on the floor, okay. one by one. Perfect. I'm done. How many red cards are on the floor? Two. Two red cards. Okay, now add the total up of all the cards and your answer is going to be 25. It is. How did you know that? I'm a wizard. As part of all the Maths Week celebrations, fourth class at Castlenock Educate Together National School put together some math-tastic jokes. <laughs> Why was six afraid of seven? Why? Because seven ain't nine. <laughs> Why aren't compasses shaped like triangles? Because they can only draw circles. Why did the student didn't do his homework? Why? Because it's a piece of cake. What did the triangle say to the circle? What? You're, po you're pointless. <laughs> Why was the math book sad? Why? It had too many problems. <laughs> what 10 things can you always count on? What? Your fingers. Are monsters good at maths? I don't know. Are they? No, unless you count Dracula. <laughs> What tables do you not have to learn? What ones? Dinner tables. The pupils have had lots of skelly fun this last week and are creeping it real until Halloween. Now that was like really lighthearted and just like a little fun piece that we had before Halloween. I don't know if you could hear it, but like there was a lot of like added little sound effects just to lift it so like any time the kids made a joke there was like a little bit of like a little creepy laugh or like an added more ha ha and there was a backing track of like this is Halloween that started beforehand just to really bring it up kind of thing and then another thing I want to point out was with that um little piece to camera the little sequence with the um the car trick and stuff the importance of getting the shot from all the different angles so that you can piece it together. You can also manipulate it to make it like a shorter sequence or things like that, especially if I know that like with new packages, they're a minute 32 minutes per hour show kind of thing. So you are really tight on time and you really do condense probably like an hour and a half hours of filming into that space of time. As I'm sure you guys know from your own things that you've kind of done that it is quite like tight on time. So I think it's so important to get especially if you're going to piece sequence together to get all the different shots and all the different angles that you can when you can. It's better to overshoot and have all of this there when you're editing as opposed to being there while editing and being like, oh no, I need this or I need to make this work. And then you can still put something together, but you probably wouldn't be as happy with it or something like that. And you're missing like the finer details that you find would have made it better kind of thing. So there's still times where I kind of go back and I'm like, oh, I wish I had this or I wish I had this. So sometimes something just wasn't said to happen. How I wanted it or something like that, but you kind of like do have to work with it and just to make it a bit more attention grabbing, I suppose. And then these are kind of like, in my opinion, the like basic kind of packages like script, box, piece of camera, another bit of box pop, another script, pictures to match, math, sounds, all these kind of things. It's kind of like the standard package, like um, packages 
that the bones of the package, the bones of this package would be the same as the bones of a higher news story on 6-1 news and stuff like that. It would always kind of be like this kind of like order of putting things together. So sometimes it's kind of fun for our job especially to kind of like think outside the box and put together a little pieces with a little bit of like a burger kind of style, something different, something to get more kids involved and just really kind of reach the audience more, I suppose. And with this next piece that I've done, it's just a little bit different, but it's just, I suppose, probably kids would relate to it more from this perspective as opposed to another one. So if we can go on to the last example I have. Sorry, Sorry, Reem, I uh, put that on before uh, you were finished there. <laughs> will, I, will, oh, will I pay it? Yes, please. Okay. Well, I know exactly what you should do. But first, so, 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 I heard you're looking to make new friends. Well, I know exactly what you should do. The first step to making a new friend is making sure that your new friend is no, not an alien. I'll take it from here. First, the first thing you ought to do is say hi and introduce yourself. I'm Adam. I'm Ben. I'm William. I'm Lizzie. Step two is to see what they like and see what you have in common. What do you like to do? I like to draw. Me too. What do you like to do? I like to play games. I am. Step three is to ask them what they like and play a game that you both like. Do you want to play Monopoly? Yeah, sure. Step four is to make new people feel welcome. One class, we have a new boy in the class. Please welcome Albert. Hi. Here, Albert, please have a seat. We read this a lot in our Did you know we have this book for learning? Yeah, and that's for our morning work. Step five, treat them how you would like to be treated. Here is your crown, John. It's perfect. Oh, you dropped your pencil. Thank you. There you go. Hope you learned something new. Thank you. Well, fourth class at Step Aside Educate Together National School have tried these tips and have had excellent results. So now you know what to do when you go back to school and I'm off to try them myself. That one was just something a little bit different just because of the kind of like the topic that we were covering, like how to make friends kind of thing, just as a back to school kind of a story. Kids wouldn't really, like the audience wouldn't really relate to it if I was kind of just just there being like, this is what you should do. So it was kind of something that I thought of just making a little bit different, how the kids kind of using the story. And like when I got to the school early kind of thing and like was chatting to the class beforehand and got them to suggest tips. So the tips are coming from kids to give to kids as opposed to that. And I was speaking to the teacher beforehand about like, um, you know, this is how we're going to do it. Just a little bit different, a little bit more fun. And then teacher was awkward. And then on the day, then, you know, the teacher kind of picks the students to tell you, like, this kid is probably, like, really confident it would be comfortable to do this. And you kind of prep with them. And again, with that one, that was, like, the different shots of, like, getting everyone included. Just because, again, focusing on the audience, the audience of kids, I'm in a classroom. I'm not going to leave a group of kids out. So you have to think of, like, five different things to get all the five different tables included. And then you have to think of, like, little bits that they do. And then, um, I don't know if you could hear it, but there was also a little bit of focus on that when the kids were playing rock, paper, scissors to get that, when they were playing Monopoly to get that moving, throwing all the books at the kid, all that, just to like keep that sound in and just listen to showcase that that was kind of happening. And then there was also, because it was a very lighthearted piece, there was also a little bit of like a fun kind of music fed just to lift it and just to make it a little bit more attention grabbing and stuff. So that was just the kind of a different one. And then those are like my planning the details tips and things. And then the last slide I think is just general tips and if anyone has any questions. So general tips is basically just like the same stuff that I've kind of been mentioning the entire time. Like with packages, I suppose the important part is mastering fundamentals of like script writing, your questioning, your open-ended questions. 
collect them together, your piece of camera, um, the more you practice piece of camera, the more you practice being on camera, the more confident you'll be. I know when I was doing my station, I didn't use my voice at all. So it definitely does come with practice, the more you're kind of more willing to do it. So I definitely advise you to do it as much as you can, just because you will become much more confident at it. And then, uh, yeah, research all your stories. Keep your head on how you want to tell them, how you want to showcase them. Like, you saw a few different examples there of like how a standard package as opposed to how I did something different where I got like a kid to leave the and stuff like that. And then my last bit of advice is apply for every single opportunity that comes your way. Even before I was I applied for my master's, I was applying for all sorts of different positions, but I had no hope in getting, but I was like, let them say no as opposed to me saying no to myself, you know? So apply for every opportunity, anything that you're interested in. I think definitely, there's absolutely no harm in applying. So yeah, I hope that was okay. And if you have any questions? Okay, um, great. Th 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 thanks very much, Reem. Um, Folks, um, I'll, I'll stop sharing now um, uh, the, the the slides, but I'll, I'll share the slideshow with, with, with the class afterwards, if that's okay, Reem, is it? Yeah, perfect, yeah. Um, guys, w w uh, it'd be helpful if you could maybe put on your cameras um, when, uh, and maybe uh, there's some questions there. There's someone there uh, at UL.ie at 2206. Uh, any chance? Uh, you can. Uh, I'm not sure who that is. Who's the the question in chat there? It takes a lot to uh, just. Can, can you tell me who it is? Anyway, I'll read out the question. Um, uh, Connor. Okay. Um, so it takes a lot of courage to stand in front of a camera. How do you do it, and how do you draw out people who are reluctant to go in front of the camera but have a good story? It's a good. Okay. Um, yeah, no, no, that's fine. I can take uh, that one. Uh, I think kind of going out on camera is you kind of always think of like how I want to look for my audience. So if I'm nervous and shy and stuff, I'm going to translate to the audience being kind of like not confident to share this story. So I kind of don't really think about whoever's around me at the time. I just think of how I want my final piece to look and how I want to come across in my final piece as opposed to the moment it is kind of thing. And honestly, after a while, like I said, more practice, you really forget. Like going into studio now, I forget that the cameras are there, doing these cameras in front of the class. Like, it's funny because you mess up and the kids will laugh at you and things like that. And you, so it doesn't knock your nerves. Probably in the beginning it did, but now you kind of like make a joke about it and laugh with the kids and stuff. And I think with the younger audience, they really do like to see that because they kind of feel more comfortable talking to you. And they're like, oh, so sometimes I kind of intentionally make a mistake in front of them when I leave my piece of camera. Just as the kids, they're like, oh, she's like us, she can make mistakes. So then when I do come to interviewing them, they already have like a little bit of a leave a rapport together kind of thing. They're already kind of like comfortable enough to chat. And even like the way our packages are structured, I won't just launch straight in with a microphone and a question and ask them, what is this? How do you do this or anything like that? I'm very much trying to just like, because my audience is younger, when I work with adults, it's a little bit different. Um, I actually find adults to be much less natural on camera than kids because they're constantly thinking of like, oh, I'm on camera, I'm doing this. Whereas kids, if you kind of like have a, good enough relationship or just like a little bit of conversation a little bit of like joke um I start every interview like hey how are you what's up like you know just like casual conversation before I lead into the interview questions just to get a little bit more comfortable and also for myself to get a feel for what the interviewee is going to be like when we're interviewing kids we're never not going to put them on screen because we have a camera and a mic it would just be heartbreaking for the child so if there is a child in front of the camera I and they're very nervous or they're very shy and I can see that from the first few questions I just make sure to kind of like ask questions that they seem like they kind of be a bit more you can kind of get a feel for it you can kind of gauge it they would be a little bit more chatty towards or even get them to expand on a specific you nugget know, that they kind of seem to know a little bit more about just so I can include them in the piece and then with adults I find that they're constantly like um fixing their hair oh no I made a mistake oh no can I fix this oh no can I do this whereas kids are very lovely in the sense that they're very open but with adults like I said it's none of it's live so you can kind of Tell them like here, go at it again. This is this, this is this, this is this. And when you're interviewing them, you've already heard what you want to use in your box when they're answering the questions. So like, if they're still nervous, or if there was, but like there was just that one sentence or that one explanation that just worked, even if they're kind of like, oh, you've already gotten what you think will work and will make them look okay as well. So I think 
it's very much kind of gauge it when you're there. So sorry, it's such a long-winded answer, but it's gauge it when you're there, but also with children feel like build a little bit of a relationship beforehand. Don't just launch straight in with the mic and a question. And with adults, just reassure them that it's not live and it'll be edited and that you can do a few takes and things like that. Yes. Great. Um, it, it, yeah, it does Aaron. Um... Aaron, can uh, guys are, are the mics working there or uh, like uh, the, the settings? Do, do you want to just? Uh, I'm just maybe the settings for the I cameras and mics are. Um, yeah, uh, no, I'm just wondering for for the okay, that, that that's fine. So, Aaron, um, do you have any issues when approaching people for vox pops, and how do you get more comfortable with them? So again, yeah, I think that's. Uh, um, you might remember yourself, Reem, getting sent out to do vox pops and the uh, the difficulty of getting people to. To respond. So, do you have any tips for approaching people for box pops, and how do you get more comfortable with them as a presenter, presumably, and how to make people more comfortable in terms of contributing? Thanks, Aaron. Yeah. Um, no. So it's kind of like most of my practices, like I said, are pre-planned. So I'm already like the school know I'm coming, the kids know I'm coming, so I'm trying to get the teachers to pick out a few kids that I she thinks would be comfortable on camera. But like, um, there's some instances where you kind of can't do that. So when I was Planning championships earlier this year, it was a case of literally kind of being there in the middle of the field, in the middle of everything, and just having to literally approach people and be like, Hi, do you mind if I tap you for this? And you get rejected. You do, you get rejected. Some people are like, No, I don't really feel comfortable doing that. No, I don't want to do that. And that's completely fine. That's like, you don't, like, I'm, I'm not going to convince them to do that. Like, everyone has to be comfortable, like, has to get permission to be on camera. But I suppose, similar to the first question, if you kind of just have a little bit of like the human aspect, like you're talking to another person, not just like sticking a mic in their face, being like, here, answer this. Just chat to them first beforehand. Oh, yeah, sure, I'm doing this for you today. Would you mind if I just ask a few questions? Oh, yeah, no problem. And it really does go a lot further than just being like, I have a video today. Would you have your questions? Like, never do that. Just kind of like, remember that you are talking to another person. And I know you kind of want to get a bit of information or a snippet for your package or something like that from them. But like, talk to them like a person and not just an interviewee. And I think people are much more responsive to that. And um, just have a chat with them. And then kind of like, even when the mic is on, just have a chat with them. And then you can just cut out what it is that you need. And I just think it makes for much more comfortable interviewees and much more usable um, boxes from them as well. Great. Super. Th thanks. Thanks for that. Um, um, it, it, any any other questions? I'll, I'll just uh, while we're waiting for someone else to come in there, uh, Reem, what's the what's the biggest mistakes uh, that you, that you made in the early days? Uh, you know, the, the the when you started off in the job or the first few packages, what were the what were the biggest mistakes you were making early on? That uh, just I, I guess to warn people to look out for these, or uh, you know, what 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 were things you you, you kind of learned from experience? Was it was there anything you kind of look back on and kind of go, you know? the fact that oh, I could have done this, I could have done this, I could have changed this. I feel like you are kind of like your own worst critic and you kind of are constantly looking at how you can improve, especially because you're learning every day. So every day you kind of are like, oh, I could have done that, I could have done this. I suppose one of the biggest things is definitely kind of like building your confidence as a journalist, I suppose, because in the beginning, I would have been very much kind of led by other people. Like, let's say I was interviewing around that and then I wouldn't really get the story I wanted or the answers that I kind of wanted. And you kind of have to remind yourself that you are the journalist, you're the one who's reporting on the story, you're getting, looking for this information and not to be swayed in a different direction. So I suppose this is kind of gaining the confidence to be firm in that is one of the, I suppose when I was first starting off, I was a little bit like, oh, no, oh yeah. Whereas now I'm kind of like, actually, can we just go back to this or can we just do something like this? Because this is what will, will work for my package. And I suppose that's one of the biggest things to learn early on. Very good. Okay, great. Um, th th thanks, thanks, Reem. So, um, anyone else want to come in? Uh, we've time for another question. Maybe uh, if there's uh, anyone else want to. Um, they're very quiet today. I think uh, it's yeah. uh, a, a little bit anyway. Uh, um, any questions about like their upcoming package or anything like that? Or you know, yeah, yeah. So. So the, yeah, the, so the second years are pitching for uh, their final packages this week, actually. So um, hopefully they're 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 somewhat in the zone. Do you have any uh, do you have any questions about pack pitching, folks? They're probably afraid to speak now. Uh, <laughs> don't be afraid. Um, I say they're all hungry. I say everyone wants. Uh, <laughs> 
maybe, maybe the pitches are just so good they they uh they 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 they're, they're super confident. Any questions there before we um I suppose do you have any do you have any uh do you, do you have any uh, tips in terms of pitching for a package dream then like how to pitch effectively? I think know the story that you kind of want to tell and be able to like answer any questions like how are you going to do this? Who are you going to talk to? Where are you going to go get participation? What's it going to do? Who's going to be it? Kind of just I suppose be prepared as much as you possibly can just in terms of all the different angles. But so I know when I was coming up with package pitches when I was I feel like I didn't really fully have them planned out in terms of exactly what I was going to do I suppose. So I say be prepared. I know I've been saying that a lot, but I definitely do think um, be prepared. And and a lot of it, uh, like like, what is the pitching process for news today, Reem? Is it is it quite informal, that, or is it every morning that you have a kind of a, a an editorial meeting where it's like, uh, well, what are we going to be doing for today, or what are we going to be doing for tomorrow, or, uh, you know, at what point do you get to pitch, and who do you pitch to, and how how does it work in in news today specifically? So I feel like in the beginning, in the first few weeks of the job, it's very much uh, kind of coming up with my ideas. Oh, do you think this would work? Oh, how would you? I do that kind of thing like with the editors and stuff like that on the show for the first few weeks. But um, now kind of like once you kind of have your feet on the ground, I suppose, I kind of like suppose after Christmas last year even, it was a case of like you built that trust relationship with your editor that they know, you know what it is that they're going to like look for. You know, like stories that are interesting for kids. You know what will like work on the show. So they kind of trust you to find your own packages and produce them and stuff like that. And then without kind of having previous, I suppose, Editorial because they trusted you because you know what you're doing and they kind of had the gist of them and then you kind of have them on a board and they can see everything. So I booked all of my stories up until the new year. So you very much, um, yeah, it's kind of like based on trust. And I suppose once you know your audience, you know the stories, you know what you're looking for, you kind of built that reputation, I suppose, and that relationship with your editors to do that. So the pitches are like that. And also it's super handy to have editors there because when you're coming up with like, different ideas or oh I kind of want to do this for a PC camera do you think it would work or I kind of want to cover this story we covered it last year but I want to do it a bit differently how do you think I should go about it so always good to have people's best ideas off and I saw two questions come in as well yeah I see Ailish and, uh, and Anna Ailish um, do you find it hard to word your questions on the spot um, and what's the best way to go uh, with I suppose with regard to asking questions what's the best way um to go about asking asking questions um i never worry about questions on the spot like i said being prepared is very important to the story that you're trying to cover so i always have my questions prepared beforehand but if i'm asking these questions and someone's giving me a piece of information that my next question doesn't need to i will obviously detour from my questions find out more about that and then come back to my questions like i said before planning your story how you want to tell it the story you want to tell is so important so I wouldn't recommend coming up with questions on the spot. I'd always recommend being prepared in what you want to ask, why you want to ask it, what kind of information you're looking to get from this person as opposed to just meeting your person and just having a chat with them. So that's what I'd always say, just uh, have your questions ready, ready beforehand. And then obviously if you ask them if someone says a little bit of information that you think is very interesting and stuff like that. Very good. I, I, I suppose that's particularly the case with TV, isn't it? Where where it's so uh, everything has to slot in and the the the, the timing, etc., is is so crucial. Okay, we've just the last question there from Anna uh, before we wrap up. Uh, hi, Irene, just wondering how many people uh, are usually with you when you're shooting a package? Are there many different roles, or do you have a few different things to do, like camera setup, etc.? And do you edit the final piece? So so I, yeah, I I suppose what's your process? I think yeah, well, but do you, do you, like your cameraman, like do you, do you have to do your own camera work sometimes, uh, or are, are, you, are you, do you do all of your own editing, or? Um... So, um, yeah. So when we're out reporting, because we have reporting days or presenting days, so when we're out reporting, we go out to our location first thing, and we'll meet up with the cameraman. The cameraman will be there, and you kind of tell the cameraman when you first season what you're gonna do. So we're here doing a shoebox appeal. That's what's going on today. We're gonna get shots of them filling up the shoe boxes, all these kind of things. Okay, grand, grand, you no know, bother, cameraman's just shooting. Suddenly I'm in the room and I'm like, hmm, I actually kind of want a shot of this or I want a shot of this or I think this would work with this line, so can you get a shot of this? So there's a little bit of a discussion, coming up with something creative, kind of like, oh, I want to do my piece of camera where I'm closing the shoe box where I'm filling it up and the camera's kind of underneath kind of thing. So it's kind of like a little bit of a discussion with the cameraman, like what he can and can't do kind of thing. 
So I was out with Cullum Hand for this specific piece who's on TikTok, he's great, but he's always up for like different kind of crazy kind of things like that. And most of the cameramen are, so they're always kind of like, um, you know, like, yeah, grand, we can do it. So just ask for the different shots that you kind of need if you're out filming with a cameraman. There was one time last year where I had done everything on my phone. So I have a tripod and a lapel mic in my car at all times now, just in case that ever happens, just in case I need to do something on my phone just to have those ready. So I always have that. And then in terms of once we're kind of wrapped up the package, I will take my memory card back and I'll come back here and edit it. And then typically it'll air on the day that we shot it. So editing, filming, scripting, all that kind of stuff. Like we have a cameraman, but all the rest of it, we kind of have to do ourselves on the days that we're recording. So um, yeah, and you much more kind of like, there are edit, like editors, but you've much more control of your piece if you're the one that's editing, you're the one that's putting it together. You can be very finicky, you can be fine tuned each frame of like what you're putting together. And it really does get to that, like you will go through it frame by frame to make sure it, it is what you want it to be. So um, much more control on that. So we kind of do all of it ourselves, yeah. Okay, okay. I think that's um, that's that, that, that's a very, very clear answer there. Um, yeah, look, I, I think that's that's everything. Um, uh, Reem, thank you so much for that. It was it was it was really interesting and kind of uh, a good reminder to them that like yeah, all not all news, not not every aspect of news is 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 hard news or making things complicated. That that a lot of the time it's 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 actually about making taking complicated stuff and and simplifying it and kind of telling straightforward stories and it's it's a good it's 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 a good reminder and um, to them uh, not to. Uh, not to kind of overcomplicate uh, TV packages, I think it's um, and it's 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 an extremely hard thing to do um, uh, to, to, to 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 write uh, and to, to to make kind of simple um, TV packages. So so uh, th th thank you so much for the insights there. And uh, yeah, I, I think that was really helpful and I uh, really enjoyed it. So um, th thanks so much for your time, Reem. Um, re really appreciate no, no, no. it. Anyone has any other questions, you can just send me a DM on Twitter or whatever, and I can respond to it. But yeah, no, I hope it helps, and best of luck with all your upcoming assignments and topics, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Absolutely. everyone. Bye. Thank you